And out of those five events, you know, your first month in business, how much money have you made, if you don't mind me asking? About $5,000. Hey everyone, I've got a very special guest today. I'm Jake Randolph with Linked Permanent Jewelry Training. And so I want to bring in one of our students who is having a ton of success. And we've got some very cool tips with, to share with you about, you know, events, pop-ups, you know, how to make the most profits and all kinds of stuff that we think you need to know for your permanent jewelry business or your future one if you're looking into starting one. So this is Taylor. Um, if you want to tell them a little bit about your business and kind of like how you got started. Yes. Hey, I'm Taylor. I'm from Alabama, a small town. Um, I've been making custom bracelets for about three years now. So I follow a lot of jewelry accounts on Instagram. And that's where I first saw permanent jewelry. I got really intrigued by it, started researching, got completely overwhelmed and said, okay, no thanks. I can't do this on my own. And then I saw Jake post about it and I said, okay, I trust him. If I have support and guidance, then I can totally do this. And I think it would be great for my little on the side business. And I just, I went with it and it has been so successful. Um, previously, before I had my son, I was an office manager and a teacher and this is way better. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. So um, let's let the, the audience know, how long have you been doing um, permanent jewelry? Right out of month. So about a month now. So in one month, you know, how many events have you done? I've done four events, two private parties. No, That's five. Awesome. Five events. Okay. And out of those five events, you know, your first month in business, how much money have you made, if you don't mind me asking? about five thousand dollars nice five thousand not bad for your first month is that is that kind of comparable to the money you were making as an office manager or a school teacher definitely not <laughs> you know I, i've known you for a while and so it's awesome to be able to you know see like like when i saw that you signed up for our training i was like oh i'm so excited taylor joined us um so when that first time you posted like hey guys i made you know two thousand dollars at this event i was like so excited um, so let's talk a little bit about your, you know, your audience because, uh, or your potential clients. So you live in, you know, small town, Alabama. I get a lot of questions about like, you know, if I live in a small town or like, do I have to live in a rich city? Like, are people still going to pay for jewelry? So what's been your experience with that? Yeah, that's one thing I was really hesitant about was this is not going to go well in a small town. All these big cities like Nashville and Birmingham around me have the permanent jewelry, but here I am in small town, but it's been great. Um, I posted about it and immediately had people wanting to book parties and small businesses wanting to host me um, as a pop up. So I don't think the small business, I mean, the small town thing is negative. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes I'll like I'll tell people that, um, you know, what I've found is it's almost easier to market in a small town sometimes than a big city because you have less competition for everything. Let's talk about your events. And so if you had to go back in time, what would you tell yourself about like, hey, you need to bring this to an event or you need to know this about an event? What's some good lessons learned you've had? I would definitely bring signs, um, like a QR code, just to make it really simple to get payments and stuff. Because you once you mm -hmm. do it, if you have people lined up waiting, you don't have time to sit there and calculate what they owe you, you know, like just have everything ready to go. Um, cute decor. I mean, you really don't have to take a lot to these events. Right. So with the QR codes, um, did you just find like a QR code maker online? Yeah. Okay. And then did you link that to, I'm, I'm assuming you said online booking, what kind of booking software or payment software did you use? Square. Okay. Square. Yeah. I've heard very good things about that. Do you ever like take other appointments, like charge them a deposit or it's kind of just show up and pay, you know, for what you get? No, for my events and my um, private parties, I charge a $25 booking fee, but that does go towards their purchase that day. So, um, but I don't turn away walk-ins at pop-ups. Like if somebody okay. just shows up, if I have time, I squeeze them in, of course. Okay. So at a typical event, how many people do you normally have? Um, around 10, okay. eight to 10. I, I usually do two hour events. Um, except for my first one, and it was like an all-day thing. But my parties, I do two hours, and I can do eight to ten people. 
what has been your overall experience with how many bracelets, necklaces, pieces of jewelry people buy at once? Um, bracelets are definitely the most popular. A lot of people just get one. But um, at my party last week, every single person got either two bracelets, a bracelet and a necklace, or a bracelet with a charm. So that was that was nice to have. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about um, permanent jewelry is like you can somebody could go in thinking they're going to spend a hundred bucks, and they walk out what two, three hundred bucks later. Yeah. So um, as far as materials go, do you find people you know go more for sterling silver, gold filled, or solid gold? What what kind of um, response have you had with that? I would say gold filled is the most popular, but it runs a close race with sterling silver right now. And then um, how much are your, like, I know you have different prices for different things, but on average, how much do you charge for, let's say, a gold-filled bracelet? Um, $75. And what's the typical material cost for that? 5 to $10, depending on the chain. Nice. So you're looking at about a seven times, you know, return on investment for that. So that's pretty good. And that's what I've been yeah. telling people is, like, with permanent jewelry, like, the profit margins are insane. I think you're starting to see that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um so like where do you get your supplies from from the link store so um as far as like the supplies you've gotten on linked permanent jewelry training.com um <laughs> shameless plug um <laughs> what kind of uh what kind of quality have you seen with that have you had any complaints or like a, any good feedback oh yeah the quality's been great um i ha i did order from another place and uh the quality was terrible because I compared it, obviously, I wore it for a while. It ended up stretching and fading. And so, yeah, y'all's quality is top notch. Yeah, and that's what I try to tell people. I know they're always looking for the cheapest prices. And, you know, when I've heard that many times, they'll go order from somewhere else or a different supplier. And you just you don't really know what you're getting because, like, you know, there's so many types of gold filled like they're like by definition, gold filled is a certain way. But you know, I've seen people who thought they were getting something high quality and then it ends up stretching or breaking and stuff. And so, you know, we take pride in like the things we offer. And Sarah, our our trainer, as you know, um, literally has everything in hand and she tests it out and like tries it out and makes sure it's high quality before we, you know, send it off to our students or customers. Once you order something, how quickly does it normally ship to you? Within a week. That's awesome. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about, um, let's go back to pop-ups because that's always a common question I get. Have you had any that are like, I know it's getting colder outside. Have you had any in the winter yet? Like not in the winter, but it, when it's like chilly outside? Yeah, my first one, um, it was an all day thing, started at like 7 a.m. And it happened to be cold that weekend. So if you are outside in the cold, take some hand warmers because when you're cold, your fingers cannot manipulate those tiny little jump rings. I'm located in Alaska because I'm in the Air Force, as you know, but, you know, it's already snowing here. And so, I, you know, I think that as people start to take these little tips and tricks um, from this podcast, I think it's going to really help them. And, you know, by the way, if you're not subscribed right now, make sure you do subscribe because we're going to have educational content like this all the time. You know, you said you're booked up for the next two months is on events. Like, where are you finding these bookings? Are they just kind of reaching out to you? Is it word of mouth? Most people are reaching out to me. I have reached out to a couple different business owners just saying, hey, I've got this new permanent jewelry. Would you mind if I came and hosted an event at your location? And all of them say, yes, we would love that, you know, because that gets them more customers, maybe different people that wouldn't normally come into their store or whatever. But the rest of them have been, they've reached out to me. I want to do some quick math real quick. And this is kind of something I just thought of. I'm pulling the calculator up on my phone. So you said $5,000 your first month. Based on the amount of time it took you to you know, do the events and set up, How much? about how much hours would you estimate that you spent on that? I know I'm putting you on the spot with some math. but Well, that one was an all-day thing, but all the rest of them have only been like two hours at a time. So that would be like 10 hours. So say 15 hours, 15 okay. to 20 hours. So right now you're making about 300 to $330 per hour. So that's pretty good, I think. Yeah. That's amazing because I don't know. And like, here's the thing. Like I know me and you actually, we went to the same college together in Alabama, UNA, North Alabama. And I know with my degree that I spent four years on and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, um, plus all that time, like I 
you know, I got a criminal justice degree and never did anything with it. You know, I know you got a teaching degree and you don't do that anymore. And so like, it's crazy because literally this training you, how long did it take you to learn how to do this once you got your machine? Um, I mean, I picked it up pretty quickly, but I, I'm, I still practice, you know, right. a couple of times a week just to get better at it. But I mean, it doesn't take long to learn and the, you have all the training and Sarah answers any question that you might possibly have. I mean, couldn't ask for more. Yeah, I just think it's cool because like the average person spends, you know, a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars for their full degree and the whole process of college. And then they usually don't even get a good job. And, you know, yeah. you literally can learn this business in weeks and or less sometimes, you know, and you're making, you know, three over three hundred dollars an hour and thousands of dollars a month. And so I think that's pretty good uh, return on investment. Yeah. And one thing that I like the most about it is I make that much an hour but I don't have to be gone away from, you know, I don't have to leave home and stay gone all day, work eight to five and then come home. It's just a couple hours here and there. As a mother of a seven month old, I'm sure you appreciate not having to be gone all day. And that's, that's what I love about permanent jewelry is like you can have high profits with minimal time. And so like, this could be a side hustle. This could be something great for people who, you know, are mothers to me, it's just a great business and opportunity. So, you know, if somebody's like, well, I, I want to become a permanent jewelry, you know, we'll call it artist or technician, whatever term you want to use and, and start their own business. What advice would you give them? Just do it. I mean, you're going to be scared. You're going to be nervous. Just do it. I mean, it's it's definitely worth it. It takes a little bit of time and practice, but so does everything else. As far as like the training, like I know I've seen there's some random people on Facebook who are just like, oh, I tried to teach myself and all that stuff. And they try to learn on YouTube or whatever. And I, I just... That seems like it's a pending disaster. But, you know, what would you say about like people who are looking into, you know, training for this? Yeah, that's what when I first started looking at it, I was like, there's no way. I mean, the time that you would spend finding videos to watch and trying to teach yourself, you don't have to do that with linked. And to have Sarah like right at our fingertips, like one day I had an issue with my machine. I sent her a message and you, you know, within 30 minutes, she FaceTimed me. You, you don't really get that with anybody else or anything else. I come from the beauty industry and in a lot of courses there, they'll just like take your money and then they don't provide any support. They kind of forget about you after they make the sale. Mm -hmm. And that's like the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're trying to like provide maximum support. And, you know, if I have to answer a lead that's thinking about signing up versus a student, I'm going to prioritize the student first. Yeah. And I mean, and you make that both of you, I mean, in the Facebook group, I feel like y'all comment on just about every single post in there. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we are here for you are here to help us and you do yeah that's the first thing i do i wake up at like you know sometimes like 4 or 5 a.m and i just go through the facebook group answer the questions answer my messages and i'm always you know prioritizing our students all right so let's do some rapid fire questions real quick um here we go do you use argon no what is your favorite chain style the cake the cake and, and where do you get that from linked permanent jewelry training Okay. <laughs> uh, favorite type of machine or what type of machine do you use? The Pulse Arc. Okay. So you're using the Pulse Arc. And just for the listeners, the Pulse Arc is not the Orion. The Orion is going to be different. And so what made you choose that over the Orion? I just, I didn't have the extra cash to drop and I've been very pleased with it. It works just as well as what I've seen the Orion does. So I'm very happy with it. Um, what is your average customer profit? Um, around a hundred dollars. Okay. And then what is your favorite generator for events? The Jackery. Awesome. Well, that was awesome. Thank you for doing the rapid fire questions with me and thank you so much for coming on here and, you know, giving away a lot of value and tips and stuff. Um, if you found this video or podcast helpful, please leave a comment below, or if you're listening to the podcast, please, um, leave a review. Anyways, thanks so much for joining me, Taylor, and um, best of luck to you on, not that you need any luck, you're already doing great, but best of luck to you on your uh, permanent jewelry business going into 2023. Thank you so much.